Hey guys, how you doing? I'm Brett Pike and this is Classical Learner. Today we're going to talk about motivation. How many times have you heard parents ask, how do I motivate my child to study? Or heard them complain, better yet. Johnny just won't study. He's just not interested in his books. He's just not putting in the time. I can't get him to do what he has to do to study and get good grades. And I already told him, Johnny, you have to study because if you don't, you won't get into college, you won't get the job you want, and your life will be ruined. Now, we all know Johnny's life won't be ruined, but we do want him to study and we do want him to take his education seriously. So the question is, how do we motivate him? How do we get him to learn the skills that we want him to learn, more specifically, the skills that will the skills that will empower him to live a successful and prosperous life. To answer that question, we should first look at what motivates the average person. What motivates you? What motivates me? Why do we get out of bed in the morning and work a nine to five job? Rain, sleet, or snow, the mailman always delivers. Well, for most people, the answer is responsibility. Most people have what do they have? They have a mortgage, they have car payments, they have credit card payments, they have children, they have to feed those children, they have to buy clothing for those children. So if they don't make the payment, what happens? You didn't make the payment, the bank forecloses on your house, and now you're out on the streets, your children don't have shelter, you don't have food, and it's not a good situation to be in. So most people work their 9 to 5 job because of negative reinforcement. If you don't get up, if you don't go to work early in the morning, 5 days a week, 365 days a year, then you will lose your house, you'll lose your cars, and your children won't have food. So most of us do what we do because of negative reinforcement. And then, of course, there's people who experience or display extrinsic motivation. People who are motivated by having the bigger house or getting the nicer car or posting the Instagram picture with them dressed to the nine so that they get attention from the opposite sex, which is perfectly fine. Do whatever you want to do. Be motivated by whatever motivates you. But when you look at polls, the average American working a nine to five job hates it. They're absolutely miserable. And this has been displayed decade after decade. People are not happy with their jobs, yet they go five days a week, eight hours a day for 40 years because of negative reinforcement, because it's what they have to do, or maybe they have extrinsic motivation. They just want nicer things. They want to keep up with the Joneses, as they say. I don't advise it, but hey, all the power to you. Well, apply that same concept to school. What are most children motivated by? Also, negative reinforcement and extrinsic motivation. If Johnny doesn't go to school, he gets in trouble. He gets suspended. He gets expelled. His parents take away his television privileges. They don't let him get a cell phone, whatever it might be. He gets a low letter grade from the teacher. He doesn't get into the classroom that is into the class that his parents wanted to get into. If Johnny doesn't study, a lot of negative reinforcement rains down on him. And of course, as we discussed, extrinsic motivation. Johnny does want television privileges. He does want that cell phone. He does want to get the next iPhone, whatever it might be. So he is going to study to get that extrinsic reward. And what do we hear from school children, just like we hear from people working their 9-to-5 jobs? They hate school. Well, of course they hate school. They're motivated by the same factors that motivates or leads to people hating their jobs. But of course, not everybody hates their jobs. And these are the people I want to focus on. The people that love what they do. The people who get out of bed in the morning and are absolutely ecstatic to start their 
work day. A great example is a professional soccer player, a professional lacrosse player. And why do I use them as the example? Because unlike football players and baseball players, they're not rolling in money, but they absolutely love what they do. They love what they do because why? Because they did this voluntarily from the time they were children. They would gladly play soccer for free. They are intrinsically motivated. The same thing goes for the chef, the guy who loves to cook and he started a food truck. The same thing goes for me, right? I am very passionate about education. I got a bachelor's degree in 7 to 12 history education. I got my master's degree in birth to 2 special education. I worked in the field of education for 8 to 10 years before I decided to start my own business, Classical Learner, which allows me to work one-on-one -on -one with parents and teach alternative education methods, which allows me to post videos about alternative ways to educate children, to better educate children, which can help people all around the world. It is very intrinsically motivated. I make blog posts that I wake up in the morning and I'm eager to write because I know that what I'm doing is, if it reaches one person, it's changing the world because it changes their world. What I do is very intrinsically motivating. But then if you look at what I do, if you look at what the soccer player does, the person that owns the food truck, it's not just intrinsic motivation, it's also extrinsic motivation. Because the soccer player gets paid to do what he does. He also gets fame, right? People know who he is. He gets glory. He gets to win championships or compete for championships. The owner of the food truck, sorry, you can hear my dog in the background. The owner of the food truck, he is getting paid by his customers to do what he loves, which is to run his business and make original meals that he thought of, that he put together himself. I get paid by families to work with them one-on-one. -on -one. I get advertising money from YouTube. I make money through affiliate marketing. So I'm doing what I love. I'm intrinsically motivated, but I'm also, I'm also extrinsically motivated by the rewards I get from doing what I do. And because of that, I love to wake up in the morning. I love to do what I do. So how do we take that concept and apply it to the field of education? Well, I'm going to give you an example. I spoke with a family this week, spoke with a father, has a 15 year old son. He was concerned about the very things that I talked about today, that he's just not interested in school like he should be. He's just not studying the way he should be. And I'm worried about him not learning the skills he needs to have a bright future. I said, okay, well, what is your son interested in? Well, lately he's been hanging out with his friends who love cars. His friend owns a car. He takes the car apart. He puts the car back together. And it's all my son wants to do. He's been obsessed with hanging out with this friend. I said, okay, great. What's the, the real problem is our mindset. We're just approaching things wrong. So your 15-year-old son loves cars. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to say, Johnny, I know you love cars, so we're going to challenge you. I want you to raise $1,000, or if the parent wishes, this is just more of a philosophy thing, you could give him a $1,000 loan to buy a clunker, a dud of a car. And the challenge will be to rehab the car and make that clunker into a very nice car, and then flip the car for money. So now Johnny is going to be very intrinsically motivated. He has this car or he's working to get this car. He gets the car. What does he have to do? He has to figure out how to put it together and make it nice, but he needs cheap parts. So he has to do the research to figure out maybe he can make a deal with a scrap yard. Maybe he can make a deal with someone on eBay, um, whatever it might be, but he has to figure out a mechanic shop. He has to figure out how to get these these parts cheaply so that he can rehab this car effectively. Then he has to paint it and make it look nice. And then his job is to sell it. So what are we going to do? We're going to buy him books on marketing, online marketing, grassroots marketing, networking. He could go to car shows, whatever it might be. But we're going to have him study marketing and 
write us papers on the topic of marketing. So now he's studying marketing, he is gaining the skills of a mechanic to put a car back together, and he's flipping this car and he's going to make a profit for it. We are pairing intrinsic motivation with extrinsic motivation to teach Johnny real world skills. I call this motivation stacks. And this is the concept I want you to take away from this video. Now, if you want Johnny to study science, that's fine. Figure out how to teach Johnny the science using his intrinsic motivation, pair it with intrinsic motivation, so change the way he's studying, and he will be motivated, he will learn whatever it is you want him to learn. Now, in our example, little Johnny just flipped this car. He's 15 years old. Maybe it took him a year. He's 16 years old now. What is he going to do with the profit? I think we all know he's going to put that money into his next car, another clunker, and again, he could put the car together, rehab it, and flip it for cash. Now, the 15-year-old Johnny that had no direction has a small, thriving business doing something that he really likes to do. Maybe you could challenge him to level up, a concept I talk about a lot. You could talk to him about incorporating. Yes, a 15-year-old can incorporate. You can talk to him about accounting and all of the things that go into business and you could teach Johnny these life skills. And by the time Johnny's 18 years old, when his friends have no direction and they're asking their parents, what should I major in? And their parents are saying, I don't know, do what you love. Johnny will have been doing what he loved for three years, developing skills, and he might be able to start a full-fledged business when he's 18 years old. He might be able to open up a mechanic shop or he might just level up and start flipping cars on flipping nicer cars, more expensive cars, whatever it might be, using the money he's been making with his little business that you encouraged him to start. Motivation stacks is a concept that the school system does not utilize, but a concept that we as parents need to understand because if we utilize it correctly, our children will have a leg up and advantage over their same age peers and they will learn the skills you want them to learn to be successful in life. And ultimately as parents, we want our children to be strong, independent, sovereign, and to succeed. Well, using motivation stacks is a great step toward teaching your children the skills they need to succeed in life. Please, if you're watching this video, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button below, click the bell, make sure you get notified for every video I post. I blog post all the time, www.classicallearner.com. Check out what I'm doing there because we are revolutionizing the way parents educate their children. We are revolutionizing the way people view parenting in general. We are going to change the world, and we're going to change the world one family, one child at a time. If you enjoyed this video, please share it on social media. I am Brett Pike. This is Classical Learner. I am the parent guy. Take care, guys.